Hello, my name is Joseph Richberg, Principal Data Architect Azure at Penguin Random House. Today I'm going to teach you how to pass parameters into your pipeline and from there into your data flow. Let's begin. So here we are inside of a pipeline. Now I have a, a copy object to show you how intuitive it is to pass a parameter to a copy object and where the difference lies in passing a parameter to a data flow. I don't find it as intuitive and I couldn't find any solid source so I created a video to give you this. Now first off of course to pass in anything into a pipeline you need a parameter. So in this case I have a predefined parameter called incoming file name. Now having that I need to pass this information to the copy object. Now the copy object is what I would call dumb. It relies on the data set object, whether it's source or sync, to drive it. And what I mean is it will defer to that data set object for all information. So if I click on the copy object, there's my data set. Don't worry about source or sync, my set. So when I open this, here's my connection. So there's a link service, there's a file path, and there's some metadata. What type is it? This is a delimited text. And then is there compression? What's the delimiter? Is there a row delimiter, etc.? So this is metadata about the data set. Now, it's an object. And to pass information dynamically into it, you need a parameter. So parameters are a way of opening doors outside of the object itself. So let's go to a parameter, make a new one, and we'll call this data set file name. Okay. Now, if I go to here, so now I've created a parameter, which is a door from outside to in, but I still haven't connected that variable to anything inside. So I go back to connection and I say, now I don't want this file to be something I put. I want it to be dynamic. And to do that, I then want to grab the data set file name, right? Data set file name. So I hit okay. And file name is here, right? Data set file name. Actually, we'll do this because I don't know if it'll like spaces. So now if I go here, I'll delete that, go here, boom. So basically what I've said is this is going to be whatever is passed into the data set file name, and that's the parameter here. So we've opened the door and we've connected it. So now you have a throughway. Okay. If I go back here, all of a sudden the copy object now knows, oh, wait a minute, my data set has a parameter. I want, I need to know if you're going to pass something in. Well, of course we are. And again, we don't want to hard code this. We want a variable. So what do we do? Click here, add content. Now we pass the pipeline parameter. So what we've done is the pipeline gets a parameter that goes into the data set property. All the copy data object enabled you to do is, is this interface, but this is important. We're done. If we were to use a copy object, this is how you do it. Data flow, a little more complicated. So let's get into that. So here's my data flow. And like everything else, it too has parameters. These parameters are the same. You need a way to pass from external into it. And as of right now, there are none. So if you go into it, I go to parameters, I hit new, and we'll call this parameter one, simply so you can see the difference. Once that's there, I go back to here, and instantly, now the pipeline says, oh, I see your data flow has a parameter. Now this is a little different. What type of parameter? Is it an internal expression, or is it actually a pipeline expression? Or is it something, right, one or the other? So. It's a pipeline expression. Okay. Ah, here's the pipeline parameter. Okay, great. Now you have to click this because this is an expression. Now, interestingly enough, if you notice, there's no other option but two expressions. You still have to check the mark. So this tells the system, this is an expression done yet. So let's go back into the data flow. So here's my parameter. It's already been passed in. Now let's look at the source that we want to substitute. So if I click here, there's my data set. However, the drive for data flows is in the source options. That's here. Oh, let me get rid of that. That was that. Now notice it says source container. 
So it knows the container. But remember, with here, I have container directory. I could do this. And then the data set. But notice here, I don't have that. That is why out here, I have these directories. I kind of have to force it. Now you could build an expression in the data flow. I tried that. I found it a little uh, finicky. So I figure if you're going to create the file name or determine the file name outside of the pipeline, go the extra distance and give the complete path except for the root. So it's the root is provided, then you need all the subdirectories all the way down to the actual file. So we'll go back to the source. And in here, so now in here, I have to connect the dots. And you do that by this. Go to parameters, there's parameter one, done. So what we've done is we've bypassed the parameters of the source. Why? So although you can set them, remember in the beginning I said that the copy object and the data flow are two different mechanisms. Copy object is dumb in that it's simply a, a bridge. You have a data set defined as a source. It controls itself. You have a data set defined as a sync. It controls itself. And all the copy object does is provide that bridge. It doesn't provide any intelligence. Notice, of course, in a data flow, you have a myriad of intelligence and all these objects, right? I can click here and I have all these things. So to do that, it seems internally, Microsoft does not rely on the data set for anything other than metadata. This allows me to drive things such as, look at this, I can project. You can't do that inside of a, a copy object, right? I can change this anything I want. I can change the format. I can optimize. So as you can see, the data flow doesn't need everything the set provides. The data set was first with a copy object. Then they introduced the concept of the flow. And to do that, they had to kind of shed some of the control that data sets give you. And that control is also how you define a data set. So again, as long as your data set is the right type, then you're okay here. And what do I mean by that? So I'm passing in a file name. That file still has to be a valid data set file name. I just no longer give it to the data set. I give it to the flow. And the flow says, okay, here's my file name. Where's my data set? Oh, my data set. Let me look at the metadata. Okay, it's a CSV. It's compressed. Great. And that's it. So hope this... Uh, is a little more clear or is a little clearer than other. So I hope this helped and made things a little clearer. I like to pass these things on. Again, if you found this video to be useful, like, subscribe in the comments. If you have any other questions about it, let me know and I'll try to answer them. And also in the comments, you could put things, questions that you have about other topics that I'd be more than happy to reference, research, and then try to create a video. Thank you.